A few days ago, I had a breakthrough, and you'll never guess what it was that helped me get there. It's the opposite of what you would think. In this video, I'm going to explain the secret ingredient in the creative sauce that helped me move my art forward in my artistic journey. Hi everyone, welcome back to Rachel's Studio where I primarily share how to paint loose dreamy animals, but I do go off on other artistic tangents as you'll see with these dandelion experiments I recently indulged in. In today's tutorial, it's gonna be less about the techniques and more about what was going on in my head as I obsessively painted dandelions over and over again like a freak. But that morning of painting led to a breakthrough and there is one thing that stands out as the reason why I was able to have such an important new insight. So this video is not about a specific technique, it's about what it took in the way I approach my art, how I think about my art, how I play with my art in order to have breakthroughs. So if you feel like your art is stagnating or not moving forward as fast as you want it to, this video is for you. So let's talk. If you've been following me on my artistic journey, then you know that one of my personal artistic obsessions is learning how to use lamp black to create furred out fluffy animals with preferably ever more fluffy results in each attempt. It's a hard technique to master. It's wet and wet and it's hard to control. So I thought I would simplify it for myself by painting something as simple as a dandelion that is a lot more straightforward than say, painting a bunny. And by the way, I do have a video about furred out edges that's really cool. It's me painting a chick and in it, I share specific techniques about my fur out successes. So be sure to check that out to learn more specifically about lamp black and how to achieve these furred out edges. Just be warned, you may become obsessed. <laughs> but I am continually building on that knowledge that I gained when I painted that chick and all the paintings that led up to that success. And there were a lot of failed attempts that led up to that chick too. <laughs> so I decided to paint dandelions one morning. And by the way, I should have been cleaning my mess of a house. I should have been working on commissions. But what was I doing? I was playing. So just know that the spirit of play, and this is actually supported by research in the field of creativity, play is another aspect that's a key ingredient to enhanced creativity. So one of the things that helped lead me to this new insight was giving myself permission to play, dink around, tinker. Even though my responsible self felt that I should have been doing something else. So that's a little bonus tip. You've got to play, you've got to experiment to move your art forward and just have fun with it. So anyway, here I am painting my first dandelion painting of this particular session and it furred out some and I was happy, but I wanted more. I wanted more exaggerated furred out edges and I thought I had it figured out. I noticed in this first attempt, my painting was getting a little too dry because as I made more and more brush strokes, they were holding their shape more and more. They weren't blooming out and it was really holding the brush strokes. And so I thought, aha, I just need to paint on wetter paper. And so the next painting I did, I added more water to both the paper and the paint. And my thought was that the lamp black needed to be able to move more so it could do its fur out thing. So here I am painting with much more water involved. So imagine my surprise when this one furred out even less. I mean, did it fur out even a little bit? Not even a little bit. <laughs> and this failure painting was key though to a huge turning point because it helped me realize what I thought was the trick was actually not the answer. It was something else and it had to do with having less water in some spots and more in others to create water movement as this dried, along with some babysitting techniques, all of which I explained, by the way, in depth in a Patreon tutorial. So I'd love to have you join over there to learn more about specifics. But anyway, this is the key thing I want you all to grasp from today's video, and that is when you have a failure, embrace it and ask a lot of why questions Try something different, knowing full well you may fail again, but failed paintings often result in much more learning than winning paintings. When you are winning, you aren't asking why. You're saying, I knew it. 
but a failure should lead to questions, and it is questions that lead to new knowledge. So failure and embracing failure is key to success in both art and life. And in fact, if you are not experiencing at least some level of failure, you probably aren't pushing yourself up against those boundaries of new artistic territory enough. Keep trying different things and embrace failure and experiment and don't try to get things perfect every time. So this is the next painting I did and it furred out way more than I've ever had anything fur out before. I was ecstatic, I had a breakthrough and it was such an artistic high and it felt so good. And so if you are one of those people who are afraid to even get started and the white of your paper is intimidating you because you're afraid of messing it up, I would say just start. Embrace failure. I have been painting 20 years and I am obviously still failing. And that is actually a sign of a healthy artistic journey that is going in the right direction. I think this is especially true in watercolor. It's not easy and it takes practice and it takes miles on the brush and you've got to make a lot of mistakes. So you really have to embrace failure, especially as watercolors, I feel like even more than other mediums because watercolor is so tricky and it does have a mind of its own. And you really have to embrace that and enjoy it or learn to enjoy it. <laughs> so I leave you with this insight that I had this last week to embrace failures, chase, failure. Sit down with a painting and say, you know what? I'm just going to splash around. I'm just going to try a bunch of things and see what happens. If it's a mess, that's okay. Because that's not the point to make a beautiful painting, at least not this time. This, the point is to just experiment. In the description, I've linked a whole free downloadable available on my website about how to get out of artistic or even personal ruts. You'll just need to join my website, but I promise not to spam you. And then you'll be able to access that downloadable and several other fun free projects that are linked below in the description. And thank you so much to my Patreon members who make this channel possible, are making my dreams come true of being a full-time artist. And of course, I would love to have you join my Patreon adventures too, follow my artistic journey where I share my techniques and processes more in depth. I also share behind the scenes and all of that is ad free. Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this tutorial because I will have another one coming really soon. Thank you so much for listening and now go watercolor your world. Bye everybody.